Today I'm going to show you guys my Bleeding Hinterclaw build for Godfall, and we're going to start right now. What's up guys, Reckless here, welcome back to another video. So, today I wanna show you guys my Bleeding Hinterclaw build for Godfall. Now, this is in no way the most perfect bleed build out there. Because if you know anything about Godfall, the uh, Valor Plate to actually do a real good bleed build would be with the Bulwark uh, Valor Plate, which obviously does a lot of bleed. However, I like doing it on the Hinterclaw because of the crit damage. So let's go ahead and get into what I'm actually using. So as for the Valor Plate, as you guys can tell, it is Hinterclaw. As for the primary weapon, I am using uh, the Sword of Courage, and this does uh, physical DPS. Primary on this is whenever you inflict bleed, shoot up to two projectiles that each deal 3124 physical damage to an enemy. Now, if you guys know anything about physical damage, physical damage the ailment for that is actually bleed so by doing physical damage you can cause bleed now as for the secondary we have a plus 27 percent damage to bleeding enemies plus 21 percent weak point damage plus 13 percent chance to inflict bleed and then plus six percent chance to inflict ailments once again bleed is the ailment for physical damage Next, for the secondary weapon, I am still using the Dark Star Crusher, which is a legendary Warhammer. Now, this video is definitely after update 2.1.17, and if you guys don't know what that update entails, I will put it in an annotation at the top right of the screen right now. However, uh, in short, this used to be a very, very OP Warhammer, where for the primary, whenever you perform a weapon technique, Create a time bubble that slows enemies by 50%, and the cooldown is 120 seconds. Now, prior to this, the um, the primary actually affected bosses. Now it doesn't, and it only affects some. Um, it only affects uh, the ads. Now, for the secondary, we have plus 14 rampage charge speed, plus 32% polarity uh, attack bonus uh, weapon damage then plus 20 percent critical hit damage as for the charm i'm using the ash meteorite primary on this is whenever you hit a weak point shoot a project uh <laughs> sorry a projectile that deals 33 79 physical damage once again physical damage equals bleed secondary we have a uh, plus 21 percent weapon technique damage plus 24 uh, percent weak point damage plus 15 percent physical damage bleed uh, plus 6% chance to inflict ailments. Please. But then again, it also does other ailments as well. As for my amulet, I'm using the Mark of the Duelist. And for the primary on this, this uh, restores 95 health whenever you perform a critical hit. This build is specifically for critical hits and bleed. Uh, secondary, we have plus 21% chance, uh, plus 21% critical hit damage, sorry. Uh, plus 7% Archon Fury dur Duration, plus 7% Archon Fury Charge Speed, and then plus 23% Critical Hit Damage. Coming down for the first ring, we have the Dawn Lord Signet Ring. Primary on this is whenever you defeat an enemy with a takedown, the enemy explodes and deals 2790 physical damage to nearby enemies. The explosion has a 50% chance to inflict bleed. Once again, this is a bleed crit build and it works phenomenally. Um, as for the secondary, we have a plus 7% uh, Archon Fury charge speed, plus 14% physical damage, plus 22% Archon Fury damage. As for the second ring, we have the Sanguine ring. Um, for the primary, this gives me plus 10% chance to inflict bleed. As for the secondary, plus 7% uh, shield charge speed, plus 14% polarity attack bonus weapon damage, and then plus 10% uh, soul shatter buildup. As for the banner, I'm using the standard of the Golden Lion, primary on this, and it is a banner aura, which does plus 36% weapon technique charge speed, shield charge speed, and Archon Fury charge speed. For the secondary, um, we have 25% uh, weapon damage, uh, weapon technique damage, sorry, plus 13% air damage, and then plus 20% breach damage. Now the air damage doesn't really help out a lot, but until I can get better rolls on it, this is the one I'm going to use. 
And then last but not least, for my lifestone, I am using Archon's tier, and the primary lasts for 10 seconds, and this gives me a plus 35% chance, I'm sorry, critical hit chance, and then a plus 145% critical hit damage. As for the secondary, which also lasts 10 seconds, this gives me a plus 11 soul shatter buildup, uh, plus 23% long sword damage, plus 23% critical hit damage, and then again, another plus 24% critical hit damage. Now, this is only my Hinterclaw bleed or my bleed Hinterclaw version 1.0. A lot of this will change over time as long as it helps me do more damage. And a lot of these aren't even fully um, upgraded and that's also going to change over time. So as for the augments, for my might augment or one of the might augments, we have the uh, evisceration and for the primary on this, it uh, you gain the blessing of power whenever you perform a critical hit. Once again, we are doing tons of critical hits. Blessing of power makes you hit a lot harder. As for the secondary, plus 10% soul shatter buildup and then plus 11% long sword damage. For my next augment, it's another might augment. It's called the Black Star. Primary on this is during Rampage, your attacks cannot be interrupted if adjacent augments grant at least 300 might and mine do. For the secondary, we have plus 20% weapon technique damage, plus 14% water damage, and plus 11% soul shatter buildup. And then for the last might augments, we have the frost fire, and this gives me plus 35% critical hit damage during rampage. And it also for the secondary gives me a plus 28% damage to bleeding enemies. As for my first vitality augment, whenever you, oh, I'm sorry, it, it's called the Wolf's Fury. And whenever you parry an enemy, gain 307 over health. And this is a cooldown that lasts 30 seconds. As for the secondary, it gives me plus 28% damage to breached enemies. So not bleed, but breach is still good. And for the second vitality augment, we have the Lion's Pride, which I gain 72 over health whenever I defeat an enemy. And this does plus 30% damage to bleeding enemies. As for one of my spirit augments, we have the Sleepless Eye. And each consecutive enemy hit by my shield, uh, by my shield throw, sorry, takes an additional 57% uh, damage. So let's say I throw my shield and there's four targets. Each one it hits will do 57% more damage than the last one. And as for the secondary, it does plus 22% shield damage. And then for the last augment, we have Primal Energy, which I gain 143 over health whenever I use my Lifestone. However, for the secondary, this gives me plus 28% damage to bleeding enemies, and then plus 98 might. Now, these are not the 100% augments that I'm going to use forever. There are augments out there that I have not gotten yet. Uh, one being the uh, Shirty or uh, Shiretti, however you want to pronounce it. Uh, but there are other augments out there that I do want to get in order to complete this build. Hence why this is the only, I'm sorry, this is only my 1.0 version of this build. So, next, let's go ahead and go over skills. So, as for my skills, I put 5 points into Weapon Techniques, 5 points into Soul Shatter, 5 points into Vitality, no points in Shield Attacks, only 1 point into Shield Throw, no points into Banners, no points into Shield Prime, 5 points into Critical Hit Chance, no points into uh, Sundering Slam, only 1 point into Weapon Timing, 5 points into Might, 5 points into Critical Hit Damage, 5 points into Archon Fury, only 4 points into Resistance, 5 points into Spirit, 5 points into Weak Points, no points into Recovery, 5 points into Ailments, and since this is a Bleed build, you need to have 5 points into Ailments in order to proc Bleed as much as possible. Then we have no points into Siphon, 5 points into Rampage, 1 point into Polarity Attacks, no points in into uh, Breach, 5 points into All Stats, one point into takedowns and then one point into finesse now this is not once again the 100 percent build that i plan on doing but this build does get me pretty high 
inside the tower and all end game activities, whether it be Dreamstones, Tower, etc. And I like it. I definitely do like it, but what is good can always be great. And what is great can always be masterful. <laughs> no, but on a real note, um, it is a good build, but it could be better. And as soon as I get those augments that make it better, I will go ahead and update this video for you guys. That way you guys can know what I am using. Now, I do know that using dual blades does a lot more damage in a sense of faster. I get it. However, dual blades are great, but not everybody likes using dual blades, you know? Uh, I'm more of a longsword kind of guy. No homo. <laughs> and... <laughs> Definitely, um, I like the longsword, you know, but there is another longsword that I do want to get That is actually in the tower that has a chance to actually roll With the sword of courage primary roll and another primary roll as well and I think it is whoops the Sword of dominance that can actually roll uh, with two primaries and then secondaries. So if I get a sort of dominance that has that role on it and the rest of the uh, second primary and the secondaries are actually real good, then I probably will use that instead. But I am trying to look for another uh, secondary weapon other than a Dark Star Crusher. It's great, it helps out with ad control, but I have this feeling that I could be using something else something better. I like pole arms, um, but I haven't found the one with good perks that I like or would want to use. If you guys have any ideas on any type of pole arms or any other weapons that I can use that's not a Warhammer, not dual blades, and I will say this, I hate with a passion great swords. I would rather use a Warhammer over a great sword any day. So, like I said, if you guys have any um, type of suggestions, let me know down in the comments below. And then, yeah, let's go ahead and try to make this build better. If you have any, actually, if you have any ideas on changing anything in this build that would make it better, besides getting certain augments that I'm still trying to farm for, then let me know. Um, once again, this build is not, you know, 100%. It's a growing, uh, it's a growing boy. It's a growing boy. But yeah, um, with that said, let me know what you guys think about the video as well as the build itself in the comment section below. And this brings us to the end of the video. I will see you guys in the next one.